ain't so. Say it ain't so. Your love is a partaker. <coughs> ah, here we go. Bitch, you's a bot. I heard you been fucking with that. Would you bitch, give it up on the bitch, spot? Bitch, 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 you's a bop. <laughs> hey, is there any, is there any kind of like disrespectful EDM tracks out there like that? Yeah, that, yeah for sure. For sure. Damn, you's a sexy bitch. Is that, 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 sure. that one cool? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, <laughs> levels, dog? Levels? Nah, that's <laughs> not, come on, dude. Nah. <laughs> Nah, what you know, else? He was taking shots at the world, dog. At the universe. <laughs> Avicii said, watch this uh, fucking galaxy. And they're out there. You know, a lot, of, like, a lot of the EDM records back then were really interesting. Remember, you ever remember that one song? That I am not a whore. Like, it would just be like a bob. Like, like it's just, it could just be like literally five words. Over uh, like an addicting pattern, and it's just, like, and then it's like, but I like to do it, and it's like, do, 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 do. yeah, yeah, I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking but about. The, but it wasn't just that song though. No, I'd be like, there's oh, a lot of other ones. Yeah, yeah. I may be getting a lot of, like LMFAO vibes so, with that shit too. So okay, uh, oh, I went to shit. I went to Day Float right uh, in Long Beach, and I met this girl, bro, and uh, she was she was. A tad bit older than us. I'll give you What's that. What's a tad bit older than us? I don't want to say her age. That's we're mid-20s, rude. you know? That's very rude, fam. But I'm going to say that she got a good decade on us, I think. Like, okay. Yeah. About a decade on us. Okay, for sure. And uh, give or take. I'm not, you know, you feel me? You know? I got it. I and got it. Uh, she was telling me about, like, how there's no real candy kid culture anymore and this and that. and. She started, like, breaking down what candy kids were. Hmm. Do you know, like, the origin of candy kids? I do not. So what she explained to me was, bro, they were the drug dealers. Like, Mm, the candy kids were the drug dealers. I think we were talking about, like, imagine putting, like, the pills around in your beads and shit and just walking in, like, camouflage. Oh, I I do remember that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like, they used to do that. That was a thing. That's yeah, why they used I remember to that. check your candy individually before going into these festivals and stuff like we that. We were talking about sneaking stuff, and that was one of the things that they they yeah. did to sneak that. And she was like, no, that was a real thing that used to happen. That's what the candy kids were. Huh, okay. So, like, that's where that whole candy culture comes from. It's from drug dealers, though. Bro Damn. sneaking shit in. <laughs> like, I had no idea. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, it was so. And random. they would refer to the actual like uh, goodies as candy, right? Candy. Yeah, because yeah, I, I remember, that. I remember my cousin would go to the four twenty festivals in 08. Like this, like this is not going to 08. Yeah, I was like twelve years old. I remember like Cam telling me stories like, yeah, me and my friends be like, do making candy and like doing it with our friends. It's cool. I'm like, what the like? I'll be, I'll be like trying to understand like, oh, I'm trying to be cool. I, I, I'm just like, I like, I'm understanding, but oh, yeah, yeah, now yeah, I'm yeah, trying, now yeah, now I'm figuring out like, oh, this is what they were talking about back in the day. Uh, yeah. So the candy kids were the ones that had the goodies and everyone would just want to, you know, be around the candy. Trade sure. candy. Trade. Oh, okay. <laughs> Damn. The sky. That's fucking crazy. And then when the unity happened, bro, that's when you exchanged the fucking payment. The payment used to be in your hand. Peace. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, you know what? Big shout out to Mylene who came out to the rooftop party. I want to say a week or two ago. She came out to me and did that to me. Hey, shout out. And honestly, bro. for a minute... Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know what? It's been it it's been so long that I did that. Honestly, like for the first two seconds, I kind of panicked. Oh shit! Because I, I didn't know what she wanted me to do. It's like she, riding a bike. It's because she well, it's because she had her piece. She had the piece on like this, and I did this, and then she's like, "No." Uh, and then she, we got closer with her shit, and then we did the peace, love, unity, respect thing. Right? I can't really do it right now, but yeah, she. I didn't have anything on me, but she gave me something, and uh. Yeah, dude, it has been so long since I have done that. And uh, yeah, I mean, going back to what 
uh, that one person was saying when you were at the pool party, how a lot of that culture is not as out there or present, but that's where a lot of these roots derive from, uh, this rave scene, you know, uh, yeah. the underground uh, raves where you had to go to a corner of a street and you had to get uh, a phone number to call and then that phone number would give you an address and then the address would lead you to an underground location, an underground venue, wherever it was at. And that's where all the... That's where all the fun happened. That was the underground raves. Uh, you know, it, it, you, ever, you ever heard about that story too? Sure. That, I don't know. My cousin was just saying this, maybe just to kind of scare me. And I'm pretty sure he was just doing it, but it, was, it wasn't just him though. It always seemed like, hey, but you got to be careful about the okay. eight stick. Yeah. I'm like, hold on, wait. What are you talking about the eight stick? He's like, yeah, the people yeah, uh, go, go around with a stick and they, they poke you. And uh, and if you they poke you, like, yeah, have AIDS, you, you know got to watch out for that. Shit. I was like, dude, are you, are you like, like, nah, this can't be. And he, I, he was like, Loki, like, kind of like, he, he discouraged me from wanting to go. Cause I was like, dude, I ain't really trying to like be in a place where like I ain't trying to get poked at. But I think this was just like a little like thing to fuck around with me. At. I'm, I'm open, but. Nah, so, bro, you know what? I'm, I haven't seen shit like that recently. I've never seen anything. So I think, I think this think that might have been a thing that oh, happened damn. one time. And then, like, you know, back then there wasn't such thing as social media. So nah, people right. were just spreading it word of mouth. But, like, I heard it from crazy my cousins one time at a party, like, at a family party. They were talking about going to raves, and they are like, yeah, but you got to be careful because people around just, like, going sticking needles with pe- on people and shit like that. And sometimes, bro, this is what my cousin my cousin has said. He was like, they'll stick needles in you, leave the needle, and, and then sometimes there'll be, like, a message attached on the needle and shit like that. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck, bro? Like... You did get me a little sketched out. Like, you're definitely right. You're not the only one that heard that shit. I'm glad, because uh, for a minute, I was like, nah, dude, I think this is just, like, some crazy-ass shit you're just saying, just to, like, not nah, have me want to go, because it just didn't seem like he wanted to take me, because I was young, but, yeah, it was just, like, I'm glad to, to know that. Uh, Damn, bro, imagine at 12 getting stuck with a needle, and now you got AIDS for the rest of your life at 12. I'm, I mean, I have not seen anything like that, or I've not heard of anything like that recently. Like, Did you come out? What do you mean? Oh, if I got poked? <laughs> you got poked? That means you got to admit you got AIDS. By law? <laughs> <laughs> shit, well, let's, let's hope this doesn't get to that. <laughs> right? Well, I mean, shit. I mean, it's good to take your physical every you know year, what? though. I don't want to talk about this. We're putting shit in the air now. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, fucking. But now we're raving. Candy kids. Now we're raving. Candy kids, okay. Dude, that that's crazy. If you if you really wanted to rave, you really had to make an effort. Like back in the days, you couldn't, you didn't just like have it at your fucking like fingertips. Like you know, when you wake up and you could just get an address. As fuck, too, bro. Like you mm-hmm. gotta think about it. the whole. Damn. So the whole festival seemed bit off of the underground illegal raves, right? Like basically, they took that aspect, that coolness of what was going on in these underground warehouse raves and shit like that and then blew it up into something legal, right? Yeah, they just found a way to commercialize it and legally, like, make it, uh, you know, a thing. There you go, yeah. Huh. That's kind of interesting to think about, especially because the illegal shit's still going on and sometimes it's more fun. Right. So you got to think, like, where do you have a better time at? Uh, I've had the most fun where I feel like there's not that much rules, like, in place. And so there's kind of, like, a playground to kind of test the waters with shit when you're at a place. And in my experience, when that's been present, I feel like I've had, like, fun. And I've had, like, a really spontaneous time. As opposed to going to a... As opposed to going to, like, venue, you already know what all, like, you know, like, we're going to this venue. Like, you can't do this. You can't do this. And, like, you kind of already... There's already, like, a president of, like, how to, like... You, 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 need, go, yeah, you need to, accord, you need to act accordingly. Yeah, but with the underground, you know, you, I guess that's not really something that comes into mind. You're like, oh, what kind of shit we're going to get into? You know, it's underground. I think the best part about underground places is that they're not too far from other places. You feel me? Usually these festival areas, dog, are all by themselves in a big ass area. So nothing mm-hmm. is really around it. But a warehouse and underground shit, you go down the street for him, you get a liquor store now, dog. Like, that is true. You feel me? Like, there's different vibes. There's different rules you play by when you're down. Bro, I drive down the street. I'm at homegirl's that house that showed up at this warehouse rave. You feel me? Like, there's different rules you play by, I think, when you're at a warehouse. So, like, I think the more randomness 
is what excites me about the warehouse shit. Because, you know, mm. like, bro, like, especially because they're more local, right? When you think of warehouse places, or maybe not, but, like, usually when you go to these places, there's there's already shit happening around that area that's not that. Right. That's just the added thing for the that night or that weekend mm. or whatever, you feel me? So it's like, okay, well, we could start at these other places, fam. Then let's, hey, let's, let's, let's go have some fun. Let's yeah. Go, let's go trip for a little bit and then go have some fucking Denny's, dog. Like, <laughs> Tripping at a Denny's right after shit? Just I don't cool. know. Well, yeah, yeah. But, uh, I was going to ask you, though, this, too. Um, you've done the whole camping experience at any of these festivals? Uh, I've done... I've done the full camping experience in Nocturnal. Okay. And at least with EDC, I've only done like one day of RV camping. Okay. Uh, do they search your shit? So I'll give you my experience when I went with Rami in Nocturnal, right? We got there and we had a bunch of shit like packed in his car. It was a car sedan too. Like I think it was, I forgot what he was driving at the time, but it was just me and him in the front. And we had a cooler. We had some blankets. We had our tent. We had cases of alcohol. They let you, like, bring cases of alcohol. So that's pretty tight. Like, they don't really trip on that. Uh, if you guys are, real quick, if you guys are camping uh, at any festival, uh, freeze up some water bottles and put them in a cooler. Because you don't want to pay $15, $20 for a bag of ice. Because, uh, yeah, that's just going to hurt you. So just definitely save money and do that. Um, but, yeah, going back to what I was saying, uh, they, they, uh, it, it, it depends on the surface. It, it, how deep they're gonna search you? So the, they'll go into your bags where you pack your like underwears and shit like. No, like no, not necessarily like that. That wasn't our experience, but but the thing is that on, do they on, do that though? Uh, they they could do it. I've never really seen anyone do it, but they could they could definitely like I've seen uh posts already on like certain groups on like Twitter and Facebook. How people are saying that yes, uh, some security guards aren't like being asked like on the book, and some p some security guards are really like. Just chill with it. So, I mean, it really just depends on the who you get. Uh -huh. But that's been my experience with uh, Rami. Like, they just kind of check. And if the surface is, like, doesn't seem like nothing that they really trip on, then, like, they're not going to uh, search any deeper. I, get, I think that's the, only, that's the way I've, I've always done it, especially when I've always sneaked in, like, my bottles. Like, underneath, like, my, underneath, like on the bottom of my backpack. Like, I just put in a sweater. Like, for example, tomorrow when I go, I'm probably going to put, like, water bottles and... Uh, a bottle or two, like, on the bottom of my backpack. And then the middle and the top layer of the inside of my backpack is just going to be sweaters. It's going to get cold at night. So what, And what, then they'll just, like, probably look at the sweaters and be like, okay, yeah, it's good. So it's easy to say to sneak in party favors and shit like that, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, I I don't think you should. Well, it's nothing to, like, really overthink too much what, about what I What I can say, though, about, like, um, festivals going to, like, those campsites areas opposed to, like, just where... What a festival amenities could bring to you, opposed to what a warehouse, uh, warehouse rave could do for you, is your pros and cons. Because I think of it as, uh, if you're doing the camping experience, bro, they're, they're basically telling you bring all your goodies in here, and let's have a safe environment for everyone to just, yeah. Chill and, 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 you. and if you think about it too, a lot of, if they didn't offer that camping. Uh, pass or that section for that festival. Imagine all those people that would trip and then having to worry about how driving. to get home and driving. So I mean, in the grand scheme of things, what they're Ouch. doing is it's 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 the future of safety when it comes to for sure. uh like entertainment and like making sure everyone's so, safe when going to a rave and festival. You know, what's, you know what's crazy? I don't. I don't personally think about insomniac this way at all. But you think they subliminally, like, hint at all this shit in, like, the way their uh, fucking branding is, like, the way their colors are. Bro, there's colored mushrooms and shit like that. Trash I can't, like, are they trying to tell you, hey, this is your two-day, three-day all experience of tripping, like, relaxed, like, without actually being able to say it? Is that what's going Is that... What's technically being promoted here? I think they know. I think they really know the demographic, right? And when you do say uh, how like their marketing is and their flyers are presented and like how their themes are, I mean, it, it's just it, it's after doing it for like more than two decades too. Like they definitely 
understand what's going on. And so doubling down on that and like make presenting it in the in, in the in presenting it in, in, in yeah, from presenting <laughs> I think it's impressive how Insomniac yeah. presents it in a in a commercial way where for the consumptionized it's like, oh look, it's a music festival. But for the ones that actually do know like what goes down in these festivals, I uh, wish like so. it's definitely like it, they, they know the demographic. You know, you know what they, they know the market. Do? What was the state that passed that all like they they decriminalized all their uh um, like like mushrooms drugs and, and shit or drugs? It was all of it, bro. It was all of it. Oh man, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it I'm not too sure. There was a state that did that, right? But look, you think it would be advertised that way if it all of that was federally legal? You think that would not? It would be the main aspect, no. it, main focus, but it would be one of those things like that. Would be pushed like this is a safe place to do what you want to do. You feel me? Yeah, I think I think I think the only small changes I would see is just you know how like there's those signs of you know like we wouldn't see any of those like uh, a- amnesty boxes. Uh, like amnesty that's what they call it. Like there's, so there's, that's like goodies. Like like, like people like, need shit. Yeah, right? or or, or is, uh, that's what they call it at at these insomniac festivals where it's a box where if you want to declare something, you don't want to actually like. Like you don't you don't want to like risk it. You want to just put your shit in here and like just like like if you just like, don't want to sneak it in, you just want to just like surrender your goodies. They have this uh, an amnesty box is what I would see. It. They claim it as, and um, I, I would see them getting rid of that. I would see them just like saying, as you know how you would usually see no no substances allowed. I'll probably just see that removed like from like guidelines and shit. Um, I would, I'll probably just see it advertised and. Marketed the same way like alcohol would be like they, I would just see like sponsors like from like now different types of like uh, shroom companies because the way they present like uh, drugs and music festivals in this case would be alcohol. Um, you should really just see it through like the sponsorships that you see on the flyers. It's never really like oh yeah like we got alcohol. I mean that's not usually it. it would just be a, a given thing like oh yeah like this is a given and these are the sponsorships that we have. Uh, associated with these particular like say, goodies. I'm not trying. Like I wouldn't say they would push drugs. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm saying they would push drug safety. Like they would mm-hmm. make that like a, because yeah 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 like, for sure. At, like yeah, why yeah, is for it sure. ground control? Oh dude, they're not trying to have like so. Just off the bat, I mean, I think they're learning from what happened in LA Coliseum. I don't think there was ground control at the LA Coliseum that year. But that see, uh, and and that's insomniac learning their demographic, like you said, right? So, so they're they're well aware, well yeah. aware that this is the place to come and trip at, right? This is the place to come do your goodies. Yeah, they set up parameters. They are to, well aware of that. Yeah, right? yeah. So you think they they do they do they do that they do insomniac does. A, a lot of the extra work that I don't really see a lot of the festivals do because ground control is a insomniac thing, and they might they might have like their squads at other EDM. at other music festivals, you know. It's EDM, and that, and that's the thing about like our culture, like it's it's a. Uh, where did Pascal come from, fam? He's from the streets. He might have been one of the candy kids, to be honest. I, I don't want to even go down that trajectory, <laughs> fam. Let's not even go there. Who knows? But, like he he started like he basically warehouse to. Massive size festival warehouse, pretty much, right? He's the epitome of a warehouse rave, right? Like, he's the goal. He's a goal, not the goal, but a goal. I mean, I don't know about warehouse, but just rave in general. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, I remember just him just doing a bunch of, like, uh, like raves underneath, like, a tunnel. Like, just, like, any area. Underground that, raves. Underground yeah, yeah. You're underground. just yeah, underground in general. Yeah, like. They would just uh, at warehouses too. Yeah, he would do it. Just like any any place that they could just find a spot to party. That's how a lot of the underground locations were discovered. It was just all right. Is this location like fucking turn? Okay, like all right, cool. We're gonna do it here, and that's where they're like, all right, now we're gonna put the papers you know like what, on the bro, on the location. Need to get back into that shit. Yeah, Finding, yeah. Like low key locations and saying, "Hey, pull up." You think you think that's possible? Feasible? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think if you uh, are advertising something and you got something that people want and, you know, it just depends on the demand on that if people are willing to make the effort. Because like, it's crazy. That's crazy how, like, a lot of times back in the day, too, they would just display, oh, we're having an underground rave. 
uh, make the effort to go to the street and get the number to get the address. But some people need the extra info. Like, oh, well, who's playing? Or, or blah, blah, blah. That's the, that, I feel like that's like the tone right now. But back but, then, so it was like... Oh, it dude, is still dude, the tone. It's just, oh, yeah, yeah. But I feel like back then, just the idea that there was an underground rave. But now we're spoiled with shit now. Like, we're and spoiled now is, with though, it, you like, know? Because, look, the thing is, that energy was different, bro. Right? Mm. I'm not... What festival is? Like, yeah, it's fun. Don't get me fucking yeah, yeah, wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's yeah, not yeah. the same energy. Like, it, no, genera- it is not yeah. the same energy. Generationally, right? like decade speaking wise, nah. So how do we bring that energy with the new type of shit that and still follow the guidelines that are in today? You feel me? How would you let, let's bring? Well, it's kind of it's kind of hard. Well, this. it's kind of hard to say because we didn't necessarily attend like those underground raves. There's not that much. Uh, I guess it's not that much proof to be able to like look at because that was this is back like in the nineties and okay, not that much not that much was oh, documented yeah. right so uh, it's very hard to find like content. Word of ear though. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It's it's always like word it's word of mouth of like oh dude back in the day like we would just show up at this location and and there is like those rare footage where you come across social media where 90, 1995, March of tw- of twenty three or whatever in Los Angeles at a random ass tunnel or a random ass like underneath a bridge. So this is people like dancing to techno. There's people in big ass jeans. So the candy kids doing their thing, right? Uh, yeah, back then, it, uh, you could just tell everyone there was no phones, dude. Like everyone was really just there for the music and for the interaction with everybody else. Because I mean, honestly, like when you go out now, like we have the phone and like if, if there's anything, if there's nothing that's like appeasing to us at the time, we'll probably just go to our phone and see what's like See what's going on in the digital world, right? And then we'll go in back into the real world. It's like, okay, all right, no, okay, now this is popping. All right, now we're now we're gonna be like invested into real life now. Back then, everyone was just enjoying it real life, real life. Real life. That's like, all there was, bro. That's yeah, it was. It wasn't. It wasn't some like, like you couldn't live off of Twitter at that time. No, there was Twitter, but you could not live off of. Tw- it was still texting from your phone to like a number. You feel me? And if you ever did wanted to document it, it wasn't Pictures, as accessible. Bro. And it wasn't accessible. It was expensive, like, at the time. So, it was rare that when you would have someone come through with something they could okay. grab a picture of. And So, how, how do you do that today? Let's brainstorm here. Let's brainstorm here. How would create that be an underground done culture? successfully? No, no, okay. Huh. Damn. I want to, like, brainstorm ideas here with you. But, like, these might be popping ideas. Okay. Think of a pop-up shop. How does a pop-up shop work? Today, I mean, usually they make an announcement on the social media the day of. Hey, we're posted up at this location from this time to this time. Okay. Here's the info. Uh, pull up on us. Yeah, it's usually pretty much like yeah, like what I've seen pop ups of this day. So they don't necessarily give the address though until they don't tell you the shop. They usually tell you the location of where they're gonna be at, and then they'll tell you the shop they'll be at. Right, like maybe day of or whatever. Mm-hmm. But they do do it over social media. That's... Back now, if I were to think like how they did it back then, like pop up shops, no, okay, I, yeah. I would just think that Text. their way of marketing would well back then texting. I mean, you have to be really rich. You fucking te- I mean, you know, back then you had to Page. post boards like, on like you know you even see on the on the freeways like right by the freeways like those yeah, flat yeah, those signs. Yeah. Like There's less of those now, but you're right. Right, but that's that. That was their. That was the only way to spread the word or and word of mouth. Is, bro. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Like that was literally their way. Like that's what I was saying back then. It wasn't people had to make an effort to actually like want to actually attend a rave because yeah. back then we're spoiled to just wake up, look at our phone. Oh, I got the address. I got. So, I got the yeah location. Everything today though, like so it's been done. Like let's not let's not get it twisted, right? Like I've seen artists do this where they're like, look. I'm gonna be playing in this location in this area. It's low key. People pop, come out, and it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gasly, Gasly, whatever. He does his whole like pop up shows now, right? Yeah, kind he, of. He's like he's like in a van or RV or some RV, shit. Now he's like, and then he'll pull up places and do that. Right. That's cool. I fuck with that. That's, That's a cool idea. That's cool. I'm trying to it's think, spontaneous. Bro. Like, how do you make randomness? Because, like, look, I think that's what today people still want. Like, 
because of the the show show market is so saturated the festival scene is very very saturated yeah how do you step away from that yeah we're, we're t- and, and and it's also it's not like you could just step away from it because like it's just oversaturated and the only way to step away from that is venue yeah is location you got to bring a different aspect of what this could be somewhere else yeah because like i said we're it was really underground to me is something that's not known yet i think that like Bottom line, that's one of the principles of underground. That's why it's underground. Right. Okay. So it's really easy to develop an underground culture like that going to another place that's not as like saturated with that market. And underground works because it doesn't happen the same place all the time. Right? I, I think so. I don't know. So I remember I remember back in the day, uh, race would move around a lot. A lot, right? Yeah. So, like, it would never be at the same warehouse or anything oh. like that. I think that's why, like, the spontaneous aspect of, oh, shit, it's here. Mm. Let's go. Right. I think that played a key part into, the, into that, yeah? Yeah. I think curiosity is a, is, is a really... Is a is, is a bitch, too, bro. <laughs> like, 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 honestly, like, I, I kind of dig a little... Ever since I've been throwing shows, like, I've learned a lot of, like, psychological things about, like, how... Consumers, uh, how, why, and when consumers like purchase tickets or like are interested in a certain event and shit. And like, you know, I just think curiosity is it's one of those things where sorry. it's like very, it's like it's an important element, uh, sometimes when wanting to spark the attention of, uh, of a rave goer that wants to attend your event because they, you just never know what you're gonna get into. And I think just that curiosity alone gets people to make that extra effort and be like, all right, bet. It's 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 kind of like the same thing when uh, it's kind of like it's kind of space shot kind of does the same way, but it's not location wise. It's, it's, it's not location. It's artist wise. It's artist. Yeah, you're it, right. It's it's pull up. We we got the location, but it, we got some hitters. No, so the the no right. Okay, their pool, their like hook, isn't where they're playing at. Isn't their sound system? It's literally the DJs that are there. They're right. they're tapped in, bro. Like yeah. at the end of the day, they. They made their way into the. They made their their in in the system. We're tapped in. Like so, imagine there, there's a system, right, and it goes in a circle. They're at the not the right at the beginning part of the system, but they're right after that, and that's where they tapped in initially. That's where they yeah. tapped in at. That's where they started their. We're space, yeah. We're tapped into. The people that are are tipping right here and then going up, you feel me? And then they mm-hmm. got those people like, but then they 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 partnered because they started getting more big as an underground type of thing, right? But they worked their way into where look, no, we're already cemented here because we're always listening to music. Mm-hmm. P- new artists always sending us shit. So the way they did things, the their planning didn't necessarily want to like the way they did the way what they did necess- like put them in an area where we're cemented here now like mm. it, even if we go here we're still here cuz this is They're tapped we, in. Yeah, you feel me? Like no matter what. And, and and last Tuesday show was like another good example of like how they still have that balance of having well-established artists and then rising artists like Mystic and Monada, Monada and Shoku and Heckler and Glaze, right? Um, but oh. I've I've always gotten these vibes from Space Shell of like the underground, especially like when I first started getting like when I first started following them like around 2015, 2016, like their approach to inviting people was very underground. Can Cause I, it was like Can I ask you something? What what blew them up a lot? Out of everything they did, maybe there's two or three things, but just name one of them if you can. Or more. I'm, a, I'm gonna uh, if I get if I could just theorize. I'm gonna I'm play by two okay, two ahead. things because I think we're. I'm gonna I'm gonna play by one. One of it's gonna be luck in the sense of that they definitely had some good relations relations with uh, okay that could with be. with having some uh, connections with artists and shit and them agreeing to wanting to just like do surprise guests and 
a green to do like those that that trend of shows, right? And okay, then the yeah. second, and then the second one, and I think what kind of uh, hooked to them in this modern day is that they were just very underground with the way they did things. I'll give you an example, like their way of inviting people. Feedback. It wasn't. Go ahead. Their feedback live stream. I think mm. that okay made them like the fact that they do that. The fact that they became the people that are no, we're the feedback crew, fam. Like, right. Where we are the people you send music to when you want feedback and type shit. That's what made them get tapped into this. Like Word, that's okay. what made them cemented, tapped in now. Like okay, bro, people send them shit. Like oh, if Spacey I likes this, fam, like. And they made it so easy for people to be like, hey, send shit. Mm-hmm. And they made it profitable at the same time. Like, right. That, what that, what they did is, is almost kind of like yeah, a, it's a branch there the of producer. what No Jumper does, fam. Yeah. They Let's just, listen to your music. Right. Send us a, it's a hundred dollars to, to repost, blah, blah, blah. But it's only like right. $50 to listen to your music. They did that in a smaller scale type shit. Right. You feel me? Like, and now. They're there. They're cemented. They're, mm. they're that level of. They're that level of EDM of what No Jumper is to hip hop. I think. I think those two I names you. are at the same level in their respective genres. Mm. I mean, I feel like that they've always had that status even before the feedback live streams because they were already getting like state like, state takeover like. Bef- I mean. Yeah, I said that was they, one they of the were, things. They that, were just that, like that cement that kept them going because, like I said, there's like three. Two, three to four things. There's so that many I think things that they planted did. them in. Yeah, like, you feel me? Like partnering with Insomniac. That's one thing that they did that will cement them. Right. Those feedback live streams cement them. Mm. Those uh, booking those random fucking big artists cemented them, bro. Those are already three combinations of things that they did, bro. Like, right. That that cemented them, bro. You feel uh-huh. me? Like. And they also did other things. I'm just saying, like, those are big key things right. that I think that really played into what Space Yacht is today. Right. You yeah. Well, me? going back to what I was finishing up about, what I thought, uh, what kind of cemented them to be, like, different from everybody else is just, uh, they weren't just, like, giving out information, like, like right away, like, with their flyers. Like, they, they were, like, very underground. I think that's what kind of, I think that's, like, they were really building their appeal on that. It's like, oh, yeah, like, we're doing it, like, somewhere secret. Because... Like back then, the form the form of trying to figure out she was like looking on a poster somewhere. All right, cool. Like I got either call marks. Numbers. <coughs> got me, got me thinking. Dude, you literally had to sign up to their email list, and fi- and like you literally had to check your emails, bro. It wasn't like you, you had to you had to go on Instagram. You literally had to like check your email and be like, oh, dude, they're fucking having it so, here, and and they would tell you right then and there, like, like like they made it very exclusive to where. You had to find out through email, and then you had to sign up for like a wait list to like get a free, like you know they made it the exclusivity like the way they played it out when I first started seeing them throw shows is that they were making it like out some exclusive shit like oh you needed like you there's prerequisites who they, were, who they them two were when they started Space Yacht but who were they like who were they though like they were right people already in the scene they they weren't just no ones like you can't take like because who those those Henry and whatever, like, homeboys' names, right? right. Whoever the starters were, they were people, like, those, them as a people, they also play an aspect into what Space mm. Yacht is. I don't want to ever take that away from them, you know? Not like, right. Like, it, it's not just those things, but it, it's who they were, uh-huh. who their connections were, what their special fucking, like, ideas and their special skill sets were as well, you know? Like, uh-huh. them as a combination definitely played a part of Okay, we're gonna start a space yacht. That oh. combination already helped them, I think. Like, yeah, to yeah. a certain level of what space yacht is gonna be. Like, think about it this way: say it was two of them that that started doing this, right? Maybe both of them were already in this scene for a little bit. They they like EDM music. Maybe they already had a big friendship, big rave. You know, like right. they're not starting this from nothing. They already knew had homies that produced that. Oh shit. These now they're getting big type shit like right. It wasn't from like we're we're little like we're trying to you know like you know it's no, not yeah that I don't think it shit. was that it was no I can't I, oh, yeah we see what's going on here like that we're has some this shit. for a little bit like 
you know, it was that. And it's them studying the, the market, EDM, what it was, what it is now. Yeah. The exclusivity. Also, their, their business brains of how fucking shows pop and whatnot. Because I mm-hmm. think that's, at the end of the day, they're, the way they do their shows, they understood how to throw a show from the get-go. Because I think they already had a crowd from a get like. Well, I don't know. I never attended the first shows like that. Uh... I'm only guessing, bro. Because I I think this could be be almost said for most people. You threw shows before for uh, parties. You've thrown parties before there was ever a low end. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like 14, be, 15. Yeah. I think that could be said for most of these promoters and stuff like that. You feel me? Or most of these I people that are it. hosting shows, fam. You feel me? So they didn't start from square zero. Maybe they saw like, oh, we could throw shows. Some people do, though. And then they realized, I really love EDM shows, Space Yacht. You feel me? Like, maybe that is what was the initial click. And then what Space Yacht became to be in EDM. Like, they saw it and then was like, okay, this is where we fit in now. And then, you know, mm. gone like that. I don't ever want to say, like, they had a strategic plan that they executed from start to finish. Sometimes things just play into the roles that they're into. That is know? true. Because, like, as much as you can plan they could have, Or they could have had a strategic plan, to be honest. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it kinda, it, or both. I don't think if you ask them both, any of them that started, started it at 18, that I have a strategic plan to start Space Yacht, I don't think any of them would have said, yeah. Oh, I mean, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, probably not I don't that think year. So, bro. I don't think so. Like from even even like a couple years after like high school and shit and whatnot, I don't see it. I think it but came but with but a I couple think... years of being influenced by the scene and then what's going on around them and what they, like I said, what played into them. Because, bro, honestly, you got I, I relate a lot of things that's going on to what you do and then what Jose do. Right. Like, you you fit into that category of those people like and I'm looking at it like that aspect I see you as the same vein as the the, the space the people from Space Yacht and stuff mm. like that like so I'm thinking like and we've had those people on here bro like where they say like oh we've thrown shows this and that like like homeboy Daro from fucking Space Yacht dog like, yeah, yeah 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 he fucking had the same sentiment almost bro like true that you know so it's like I see now like okay it was always in you, bro. Like, it was always there. But then you getting influenced by everything else, you as a DJ, like, being, oh, I need to eat it. Like, that played into everything. You feel me? As much mm. as... Like, I'm pretty sure when, when you were fucking... When we were in high school, bro, you weren't thinking low end. You were thinking... I mean, nah, I can't even say that, bro, because you were thinking... For sure, for like sure I was just like... Dabbling. I was just everything. trying to. I was just trying to DJ. Fam. Like I just had DJitis, bro. Like my whole high school, I was just trying to DJ. Like make. I was, you know, but that that played into what what low end is today. What has like who you are and what the things you do today. Yeah, a lot of the, yeah. All of that played into it, bro. Because imagine like I don't, bro. I because I do not see it as someone that okay. My whole life, I was only into. Let, let's. I, I'm trying to think of a very natural thing. <laughs> I was only into wanting to become a teacher my whole life, and then at 26, it clicked into me, and I was like, "I'm gonna throw the best raves in the world." I don't think it works like that, bro. I do not think it works like that. Maybe that, that's maybe, me. That's yeah, me, bro. yeah. You I know, I don't think it works like that. You know, I have actually met some people where they had like they they actually like done a really great. Job and what to do in their like career profession, and they're just like, and like and like it's it's like on some like careers where like they they life is like easy for them in terms of like finances, like their livelihood and shit, right? And then you just see it like we're like you know what I'm just gonna be a DJ. I want I want to like play EDC and, and like I want to do this shit, or okay. or yeah, I, I want to nice. just drop everything and like start throwing shows and shit. It's like I don't I, look. I can see and, that and, and, and they were and they were shows, and, they, and, they, and they were um they were like age. Like thirty and shit. I'm like, damn, you're making this decision at thirty. Like, that's a profession to- change. I can see that, bro. Like, after being <coughs> successful, so, bro, imagine right after you got out of like high school, well, you started I'm- a job that you were already there for for like fifteen years, bro. 
you worked your way up in that company. Now you're at the highest level. You're still chilling, but mm. now you're at a content level. It's like, okay, now what's life? Am I going to just continue doing this for the rest? And that's what clicks people into career change. But I don't know about like... Like Shaq. What's... Yeah, yeah career, career change. change. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's he's doing it full time. Yeah, yeah, it's a career change, bro. But being able to say, like, imagine being a, a basketball player and then after retiring, you're saying, okay, now I'm going to curate the bachata scene, bro, for everyone. Like, that's not how it works. You feel me? Like, that is not how it works. <laughs> like, imagine Tony Hawk retiring from skateboarding and saying that. <laughs> that's, you feel me? Like, that, that, that's kind of not uh, how, like, you need to, people need to respect you, like, it's a lot of shit that go that goes into this. You bro. need to like, trust that whoever's like behind that shit, like yeah, like that has a sense of what they're doing. And I'm pretty sure, like, spa- like let's go back to Space Yacht. The artists that that got booked for Space Yacht when they weren't like anything big yet, the mm. the big artists, I'm sure they saw something in what Space Yacht was that made them say, "Oh yeah, I'll do it." Yeah, you feel me? So like, and that goes to who they were, who you know they're. What they they came to be, what they built, type shit. Like, right. It. I don't think it, it, it. I just. I just don't think a lot of this starts and can like continues in one straight roadmap. I think sometimes people just fall into it. And I think they fell into everything that they have. Not to say that they didn't plan, but I'm saying a lot of what happened is a lot of we fell into this. Yeah. You know, yeah. A lot of good shit happens because. But we fell into this. I'm pretty sure Pascal could say the same thing, bro. I just wanted to party at raves all the time. Yeah. And now I have fucking, you feel me, insomnia. Yeah, yeah. You just wanted a DJ, fam. And now you fell into what you got. You feel me? Like, I think that's how shit plays out. Like, you just wanted to do something, and now you look up and do that. Like, that TikTok fucking thing is, like, when, when artists and shit like that are doing that whole thing where it's like, Oh, uh, no one's uh, booking me for the price I want. And then it shows them as a picture as a little kid, like, we're getting booked for art, like, type shit. Like, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, like, we got to, like, you know, sometimes it's a, oh, damn, we fell into this. Like, as much as we didn't think we, anything would happen from what we're doing. Right. Yeah, we fell into this great situation, you know? Mm. I feel like Space Yacht is, is something like that, you know? It definitely is. I think there's, I, but I feel like that's a lot of great things are things mm. people strive for for something and they fell into it. You know I, mean? mm. I think that's what makes things really fucking dope. I'm trying to think of other things that are like that. Even when it comes to making, producing your own music, bro, like sometimes that you start true. off producing something and then you fall into something you love. Same shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. What did you initially start DJing or producing? And you could even say DJing too. I think, like, seriously, like, right into college, producing. So I started really, like, trying to, like, make some what things were you from producing? scratch. What did you have on the dog? I was like, I'm going to produce this, bro. I'm this. I'm- I tried to make some fucking jungle terror. And what was coming out... And what did you land like, into, fam? What's Husky today, fam? Bass music. Not jungle terror, dog. You feel me? Nah. Crazy to think that shit, right? But, but and not to say, like, because... I just think that if Jungle Terror was still a thing, like, that people listen to like that. And then also me if I'm still fucked with it. I think I think also I think also people, if I was still fucking with it, like, I probably would still make... I I, I just don't really mess with it like that no more. I think that's why... Don't I like, I like making... I like making what I like. There you go. I like make making what, like. what I like to make. It doesn't matter yeah. if it fell off. Yeah, yeah. I, I like making what I make, dude. Like, so it's just kind of like... And that's why... Uh, it's funny to see a lot of the producers make what's trending, but it's like kind of obvious they don't really like making what they like. But it's like I feel like they need to make you know that what's shit. What I'm starting to see the producers that that are making shit they don't like, watch their live sets and watch them drop their live music, and see what it looks like compared to what they look like when they were DJing the music they like. Mm. It's, it's in just, the body language. It's not the same, bro. Yeah. Like, I can tell, bro. You're not really fucking with this, dog. You're trying to really fuck with this. We've been there, dog. Like, I, I, I don't know. There's a lot of... I don't say there's a lot of people like that, but there's people out there definitely like that. I think, I think if you can emotionally take advantage of, like, why is it that we're making, like, a training track 
and not really fall too deep into like that shit. Like you, you get know what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. yeah, you for sure. Influence. You know, like yeah, uh, th- like for sure. Like there's there'll be like sections of the year where oh damn, Zion Donald's not making like some like trap uh, house stuff. Like this, now this guy's making drum and bass. Uh, you know, maybe someone gets influenced by listening to an artist or going to a drum and bass festival. I don't know. It's just, it's always a trend I see with producers uh, that whenever something's trending, uh, they get influenced, like, right away. And, uh, and and it's cool to see. Um, but I, 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 I don't know why. I feel like with some producers, it's just, they don't want to make it. And it's just like, if, dude, if you don't want to make it, just don't make it. Like, like for the sake, like for for your own sake of like, as an artist, you know. But I get, I get it. Like you know, where the market's at. Like, like for example, like Latin Tech House. People are trying to make Latin Tech House, and I can see a lot of people like either getting frustrated because they can't make it, or they make it and they they get the product right. They have it ready, but you could tell they're just Bro, not like invested in it. Like it's just like, dude. The like, easy way for that to do is just collab with someone who is that. There you go, fam. You don't like you just add you. What you are, onto what they are, bro. And there you go. It's your blend of what Latin. Whatever it is the genre is you're trying to do, bro. If you're inspired by it, but you don't really want to delve into the whole, like, this is what, like, I want to... You know, like, bro, like, talk to these people, like, vibe with them, and, like, show them what you do, and and then show them what that Latin tech... Whatever it is, you know? Right. And collab and... Make that, bro. That's what that's what everything should be. Like, be good at what you're... I'm not saying don't make it. Make it with someone who's good at making it. Make it with someone that could be like, oh, okay, I like this idea. Let's really make it this now. You feel me? Instead of trying to, like, trying so hard to make something that that there's already people... I mean, not... No, but that's what I'm saying. Like, if you genuinely, like, are interested in making it, then, yeah, that's the right approach. But some people are just, like... To trend. It's a, it's a trend. They don't like. They don't, they they. You could just tell them they don't have really interest. But it's it's a it's a brand. It's a, it's a good brand move for them. Like in the EDM market to do right. It's just like if you don't like that shit, then like honestly, like it, there, there's certain there's a, there's a certain way to like build fan base. Uh, and I can and like that's for sure like a a good way to build fan base. But like at the end of the day, like the art the art is sacrificing like the self pleasing within them, like whether or not like they're fucking with what they're making or not. Oh, wait. This is the uh, full one. Oh, my bad. Gotcha. Ah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, like, I think that's, well, I feel like that's the approach I'm going to start going on now. Like, I'm starting to understand, like, where I want to take. And this is for everyone. I feel like you got to understand, like, this is a good question to ask you. What do you want out of your production? Like, what I want to get out of it after I'm done with it? Or, like, after just, like, you're said producing. and done, like, what was any of the tracks? What is the overall feeling you want after? Uh, I got my shit out. I vent, dude. When I make music, I'm venting, bro. Like, there's just some shit I can't really express with words. Like, I got my, yeah, like, that's like my ultimate goal. Like, I got my shit out. And this is, I make a lot of shit. And it's just every time I make some shit, I'm venting, bro. Like, but a lot of the times when I do write, when I'm venting, it's not necessarily something that I could that, I, that I'll say at that time. Oh, this is something I'm gonna release like as a song. I've had those projects where like, oh yeah, or you, maybe you to the uh, like, but maybe you, you might not produce for to, to vent. Maybe you produce for other reasons, right? A lot of producers like uh, produce for other reasons, whether it's for venting or ghost producing for someone else, right? Um, but because I don't ghost produce for anyone, like it's just for my own like self production. Like mainly, it's just usually like I'm venting my shit and. Uh, vending it like in the dance music way, and and some projects come out to be like you know pretty cool. That I think other people can like check in on what I'm feeling because I okay. feel like every record that I make, it, it's a it's like a sort of like an experience or like a feeling that I'm going through, or the energy that I'm on. And so, uh, it's just literally what I'm, it's just literally what I'm trying to like get get out of my um, get out of me like. Uh, energy, uh, a feeling, like an experience. Okay. Just my my way of venting. That's my that's that's what I'm trying to get out of production. Just so that's I, all. The some, only yeah. You produce for. Like like well like that's like one of the reasons why like. 
I'm producing like like because if I'm not producing, bro, like I just like I get really overwhelmed. Uh, because I can't necessarily like like the thoughts of me trying to like comprehend certain like emotions that I go through. Like I can only just really flex it out when I'm when I produce music. So that's one of the really important things why I like it's like therapy to me. And then and then it's cool that I'm able to use uh use that as well to present it in a way where people can check it out and even to where I could play it live, like uh in, in a setting like in a festival or a show. Uh or even to see that like some people can connect um to like my emotional um uh, or to my emotions like in records like that. That motivates me more to write music. So over time, like seeing that other people fuck with that shit too, um, gives me another reason to like produce as well. Like, oh, like there's another. I, I don't feel alone, you know. Like I, I, you know, sometimes I feel certain things, and I'm always wondering like who else feels like this, or who else can maybe connect to what I'm connecting to, whether if it's the energy that I'm putting on or the whatever it is that I'm venting music wise. Um, yeah, a lot of times I'm, you know, it's just me just putting out what I think it's. A lot of times, it's just I'm just trying to put out some music, like. Just, you know, bottom line, I could care less if I'm playing all these fucking shows and whatnot. Like, the fact that I'm just, like, putting out music is just pretty so cool. So, why do you promote music? I'm just asking. Just thinking, no, well, like, like my, this, is my, this, is my curiosity, this is my curiosity factor. I said, okay, like, this is how I feel. Like, I want to see what other people think. Um, and then also, too, like, why I promote music from the, just, like, from the business perspective. Uh, like, I monetize the music. So, I mean, obviously, like, the more listeners... I come across, you know, I mean, it just helps me out a little bit more, right? Um, what do you mean? Like, that's one of the reasons why I promote my music. Is that why way does the monetization to, help you out more? Um, the more listeners that play my music, just uh, the more income I can get from um, people streaming my music. So the more people that stream my music, um, the more that helps me out income-wise to, um, you know, either put that more towards back my production uh stuff like that. Okay. But that's one of the reasons why I promote. Um and also too, like if I'm tagging there from the music career uh, aspect of it, I'm just trying to get my name out there in terms of, like my style. Uh one of my goals is like to play EDC Las Vegas and uh having people know your name uh is a good factor to like you know getting these type of like placements. Uh, Cause it'd be cool to play a festival. I've always been one of my goals as a DJ, and uh, one of the goals to like perform at these festivals is definitely like putting yourself in territories that may people may not know you. Like if you're not, if they're not like from your area, so that's one of the reasons why I market like gets to get into the other areas that may people may not come across from me. You can do so much um, local wise, but yeah, I mean just to kind of reach other listeners um, and see if they connect what I'm like with. Um, and build a fan base, build a community, and you know, see see what people uh are up to in terms of like what is it that they like about me, music wise or not. Like some people, uh, uh, there's certain tracks that I make that some people like more than other tracks that I make. Uh, you know, there's I'm starting to see like a I don't know if the word disparity is the right way to put it. Like, but um, yeah, no, a lot of times it's curiosity these days, you know. A lot of times it's just curiosity. Curiosity for to putting out music is curiosity, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, to put out, yeah, yeah, because like we we don't have to. Yeah, we don't have to. We could just put this all low key. And if you want to get shows, you want to pitch it to promoter. Hey, I got all this unreleased music. I'll show you. And if it's like qualifiable, like at least you know that I'm about my shit. But yeah, like I think I think curiosity. Oh, like who else? For me, it's like who else? Like. Can connect to where I'm on. I think that's always just been something I thought that I've like thought of when I'm like marketing and like getting into other people. Like, all right, like let's see who else. Like, l- let's see. I'm not like in terms of like releasing it as music. Like, who else? Like, like I'm not crazy. Like, like because you know you you want, like you're hoping that when you put it out to the public, marketing. Like, all right, is this some shit that you know people can connect to? You know, or you know something. You know, people can be like. You just want to know, like, especially when you're a new artist, music wise, you just don't really know where you are in the comparison, like in, in music, right? Especially when you're trying to make music, like how good of a music of a music artist are you, you know, or like how do people interpret you like um, as, a, as an artist when you start pushing stuff out? So I feel like that kind of like those thoughts made me want to like 
start getting into production, you know, because I've already I've already done like the whole like DJing, like I already did my whole showcase of DJing in like in high school. Like now I want to like know what people think as a producer, like you know uh, that side of things. Okay, I I th- I felt like I was a real real, real uh, I felt like I was a good DJ like like throughout my high school years, and I kind of just wanted to see if I could like translate that over uh, in production. Like you know, I just always felt like. Especially, like, in my, in the stage of, like, learning production, I was just, like, very, um, like, big on, like, just learning on, learning shit. Like, all right, like, let's see what the fuck we could do. I started with mashups and then started going into edits and then started learning into, like, trying to make some jungle terror, like, originals. Trying. <laughs> and then it uh, led into uh, more projects not seeing the light of day. And then some projects seeing the light of day and then some projects landing some label releases. And then now, like, being able to, like, comfortably self self release with like you know a nice little fan base I have going on for myself um yeah I mean there could be a lot of reasons why I I I market music or I started producing music it's interesting but, uh, vent, uh, venting though yeah a, a lot a lot it did start with like venting you know like for sure it started with venting so what were you trying to vent when you started making jungle terror what was the shit going on, man? What were you venting, dog? What was going on? What you mean? I was trying to vent that. I know this fucking genre. Watch. And then, nah, I just never... I couldn't make this fucking genre to her. Yeah, That's it's interesting like, to think, like... Because uh, you make music, right? Yeah, like, and I want... What it is. And, and then just to end it, I just wanted to, like, know how I felt to make a banger. Like that was one of my goals, and I, I mean, that, and that's and that's just like subjective, right? Like, if if any of you guys think uh, either my music is a, my, some of my music's bangers or not, um, but like I, I think as a DJ, it's just like be, like just like dropping records, oh, that's a banger. I think just to have something my own and just to play it live, being a DJ, I think helped motivated to get be, uh, learning being a producer because now it's now once I have like my own, then I can now play it live. So uh, being a DJ definitely helped me motivate. Uh, get that production stage going for myself because yeah just to just to kind of like an attempt or trying to like learn and study how to like get to that end path of making a banger I think that's just kind of uh I've always uh, definitely like motivated me kept me in the loop of trying to like like nah we, we could definitely get that build of uh sounding right or that drop sounding right or, the, or whatever the case was the melody yeah what about you uh what are also, some things that you oh, okay so like uh no it's interesting to think like uh the reason you produce still you make music still like I I think about it in a scale of bro there's a lot of people out here that make music that don't necessarily promote it don't necessarily do do the music business aspect of it but they use it for other things and other right. facets of their life <clears throat> like I I'm going to give you an easy example a dude that knows how to play the guitar, bro. Like, he might use it just to pick up on girls and stuff like that. Like, that's okay. his reason of making music. Like, to find love, to express his emotion of love. Right. Um, just pick, and that's his. That's fine for him. You know, like there's people who just play drums that that that'll play just for a few people. And oh, once they know that I can play the most complicating fucking like. Uh, drum breakdown or drum fill like like I'm cool like you feel me so many people get into music that that I don't think they like it less than us or love it less than us or anything like that but they still get into it but they don't necessarily take the route we're taking you know there's different facets of of making music and it's still being successful for you you know mm. like because what you said like that's a that's a great like way of going for making music and shit like that like that's that's a facet that's a line of going and but i think another thing is for you though like i think somewhere in there bro like y- you're mannered with puzzles and working uh things out for yourself and music business and music marketing is one of those things for you that you kind of like whether or not you know it or not I feel like that's something that you're still like I got to figure out okay now I got to do this now I got I feel like that's a part of you 
right. and some people that's not a part of them so they never even think, think of, about it or whatever they're like nah I don't even want to be like this type of person like yeah, yeah, nah yeah. bro I'm more of a laid back I'm playing this because I enjoy it and hey watch this yeah yeah You like you know like there's people get into music I'm breaking it down this is music yeah, not yeah, EDM, yeah. you know right. music for weird some people get yeah. into it for bro they're acapella people that only <laughs> yeah, play right, right. uh they love music just as much as we love music and shit, but they chose to coddle music in that way instead of you coddling music in, in your way and, mm. and the music business way, you know? Right, Because, right. like, bro, like, yo, me, we, we've done it. We've seen it. We've gone out to fucking these peers before and seen homeboys get down on the guitar yeah, and shit yeah. like that. They are not doing it for, like, the fame aspect. They're doing it for ends meet and shit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like they're they're still, but they're not getting in the music business, music marketing aspect. And I think the people that do do that, whether you know it or not, it's because you like that, bro. You like the difficulty, the difficulty. You like the fluctuation of how things go. Like it's a game, bro. Like yeah, whether or not we know it, I think it's in us, and that's why we're chasing this. Right, it's a chase. And I think that's why a lot of artists do. A lot of artists that are chasing this lifestyle, this touring, this big, having mm. your name on the screen, being at a big EDC festival, is because you want to see you there, but because you figured it out and you played the game and it mm. it intrigues you, I think. And I'm, right. you know, but it intrigues so many other people too. Right. Like, don't, don't get it. Not just you. It not intrigues yet, me yeah. in so many different ways too. You feel me? So it's like... Uh, it's just interesting to hear that from another person, not just myself. I mean, me. this is an actual ass industry now, bro. Like, and so like, it's you been think an about industry, it, like, bro. It's been an industry. Like, actual. And we didn't set the rules industry. for it. Remember that shit. You know, and it's Someone just did. like. You know, going back to what you were saying, dude, like. Bro, I know even speaking about it bubbles you like. Bro, it's in us, dog. Like, it's just in, like, I think, I really think it's just in, like, we like difficult shit at the end of the day, bro. And to me, I think this is so fucking difficult. Even if, like, even if I wasn't in the music industry, I'd still make music, but I'd still find a way to have to work at something because it's difficult. I'd find another Mm. difficulty in another way. Right. And I think, like I said, this is, because... People who get to a, they don't stop. Think about it, bro. Like an extension, he's not stopping at. A lot of these artists mm. are not trying to stop at where they're just plateauing. You no, know what I mean? that's just what's happening, bro. They're at the end of the day, stop. I have. I'm a firm believer that if people can get an opportunity to make their reality a reality, they're gonna make it. A reality. They're gonna make that reality, bro. And then I think that's. I think I can speak that to most people to, to a certain extent. You know, if. I mean, I, I feel like if people can wake up and then just, like, paint the reality the way they could, they'll do it. Like, you know, for some people, it's just waking up and not having to go to work. If people can just paint it like that right away when they wake up, they do it. But that's not how work, life works like that. So, you know, and then let's take it back to, like, the whole, like, you know, excision thing real quick. Like, those guys are not going to stop because if they're saying... Excision could have stopped a long time ago. Right. But if they're thinking, oh, we just, we got here. even and, and if they had the state of mind, like, dude, we never thought we'd get here, but we got here. Why stop here? Like, what it, else can... That why stop is, let's make shit more common. It, you might, it might seem as why stop we're already here. That's... It comes with a lot more. Why stay easy, bro? Why? That's what it is. Like, I, I really think psychologically, that's what it is. It's not why stop. Why keep... It's why stay easy, bro. Why keep mm. it easy? Let's complicate our shit more. I really think that's what it is. <laughs> and I honestly think dubstep producers that take it to that route of music business make it even difficult. Even make it even more difficult for themselves. Because when once they find out how to fine-tune one synth, synth, bro, these crazy motherfuckers are like, I right, let's make another synth that only goes for a half note now and fine tune. And let's arrange these in so many. I think, like, we, those type of people just like difficult shit. And this is what it is. Because, bro, like, okay, I'm, this is wild that I'm saying this. Because I really don't, 
I didn't necessarily get a good impression of Homeboy when I met him the first time, but I got a sense of this motherfucker is smart as shit, and I could tell you like difficult shit. You remember Hiroshi? Yeah. Homeboy is on a totally different level of what production is, bro, when it comes to what we can make. But I feel like he likes shit so difficult that he's not content with what he's making. Like, I heard him put out a clip not too long ago. I, I want to say today, even, or maybe, like, yesterday or something shit, like that. Yeah, I don't even think... I don't know, I've and seen it was... It was dubstep, tear out, but it was made, like... You know how people say, like, there's the people out there that are like, yeah, I'm a mix metal and, like, put it into, like, dubstep and this and that. And then you hear the production, and then it sounds very, like, not clean. And mm. it sounds, like, everywhere, and you're just like, damn, yeah, no, nah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. This motherfucker, like... Figured it out. Figured it the fuck out, bro? And I feel like he's still trying to figure out a way to make shit more <laughs> difficult for himself for some reason. Sounds like a lot of Because even when I first met him, bro, I checked out some of his tracks... And I'm like, this motherfucker is on some shit. <laughs> and now I'm just thinking, bro, you're really just trying to figure out a way to make things more difficult for yourself. Like, like legit, bro. Like, that's that's all I'm thinking at this point. But when I'm thinking will, when will you be us, satisfied? <laughs> that's, when, when, when will, will be you satisfied? be satisfied? Yeah. When will I be satisfied? That's exactly shit, the thing, dude. When will we be satisfied? Because I know, like, bro, I'm always, I show you some shit and you're like, yeah, it's cool. Like, blah, blah, blah. But, like, I'm not, I think, like, bro, like, Nah, there's more. I need to make it more difficult. If it was this easy for me to produce and you said it was good, I got to make it more difficult. Like, there's, like, just things, like, flow in your head. And I'm just, I relate that shit and I see it in other things now of right. my life and other people's life. And, like, it's crazy to think that that's just the type of people we are. Going back to what I said that last podcast about, you know, the type of people people are in, like, genres and shit yeah. like that. I think bass producers who go into EDM that want to play these big shows love to make shit. Because watch this, bro. Let's take EDM away from your life right now. All right. How chill would your life be? Chill would your life be, bro? And how much other things could you be doing if you weren't focusing on EDM? In an everyday nine to five person life. How chill? How <laughs> chill and living good and eating good would you be right now if you never focused on EDM? Bro, you, I you wouldn't be I... in Moval. You would be living life somewhere else. Like, right. You'd be eating, fam. Like, okay. I, no doubt about it, you'd be eating. But you like shit so fucking difficult, fam. Like, making music isn't easy. <laughs> you feel me? Like all of this shit is not, e but that's just the type of people we are. You know, like mm. that's that's how I see shit sometimes. Like, I feel that that's just who we are, bro. Like I don't. Right. I'm sorry. Like I, I could not come home and want to focus on producing. I could come home, focus on how do I level up in my corporate job and get here, here, here. Let me study this real. That's so easy, bro. Like that's because you know there's ways of. Moving up in corporate where it's set in stone. Like, that's why we went to school, like, elementary to fucking high school, bro. They laid it out for us. Yeah. We see that. We're not dumb, bro. Like, we understand, like, the lifestyle we're living, the way people outside of the scene perceive how we are living might not be the most As high irris living. Irresponsible, and immature. We understand immature. that, bro. Everyone needs to chill the fuck out. We get it, bro. I get it. Nah. Nah. It's not for us. Fuck you, dog. Like, that's not our life. That's just not what it is. It's just really not. You know I mean? It's not for everyone. <laughs> it's not for everyone. I mean, if you don't want to have fun every day of your life, I mean, whatever. No, I'm just kidding. This is not for <laughs> But yeah, like, I don't know. That, that That's why I was asking you, like, why do you... Just to... To understand the thought process of, because because as you were saying things, I'm like, damn. Now, 
okay, if you want to do this, that just makes what you were doing before a little bit more harder because now you have to cater a little. Like, I'm just thinking of the difficulties you're stacking on on top of just making your music. Mm. And I'm just like, damn, that's, that's just more shit to think about when I'm making music. You feel me? Like, and some other people can be thinking about other different, other, like, types of reasons and, and other, then, like, aspects of why they make music and shit. And then let's go back. It just falls into some people sometimes. Sometimes people say, I'm going to make music like this. And it fell into them, bro. Like, yeah, where true. they were at and where everyone outside were at met together perfectly. And with some people, it's not that easy. Not that fucking I wasn't easy. a big fan of dubstep or bass music. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? That. That's why. What happened? What? You say I'm obsessed with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just doing it for the trend, guys. Sorry. Shit. <laughs> nah, I don't think you'd be doing it this long if it was just for the trend at this point, bro. I feel that. I feel that. No, nah, nah, I mean, shit. I, I, I mean, honestly, I'm I'm impressed. Like, I, music production, like, for those that just don't know, like, pr- production, like, that shit's pretty, t- this is pretty tedious, like, in the beginning, for sure. Um, you know, where to start, you know, how to start, how should it sound, like, what is what kind of sound do you want to like develop for yourself starting out? Like it, it's a lot a of, huh? Huh? Oh, I said I just caught a body. Caught a body. Oh, word. Um, yeah, music production is definitely tedious. So like, when you're able to make that decision, uh, especially like release that in public for other people to listen to, because like, like I said, like, like going back to what I said, like I've used I use a, a lot of that music making to vent. So like a lot that's like that's like me accepting like dude like. This like this record may not be as like heavy liking to like the current my current audience, but like fuck it, like this is what I like this this energy that I'm on is like my feelings for now, and like fuck it, like we're gonna see who, we're gonna see if people can fuck with this like, and that's another reason too. I think I would want to release music out in public because I just think as all of us like we're unique to the sense that we're just not another 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 like I guess like other like likable people people like us so when other people when, when you like put like your artistic like vision your creativity into something and you put it out and people like say i'll fuck with that i feel like that's like a it's like a unique connection like oh dude like yes. like you're you're like, you're like damn like there's someone else like like guess like me like they they say they, they, they connect to the sense of like vision that was inside of me and now you're like i'm not it's the feeling of not being alone anymore like you were saying, yeah yeah I'm like i alone. just i'm not alone in the, in this time in, in the sense of like Whatever the reason was for releasing this track, right? Yeah. You know what makes me feel like get out of that mindset of I'm alone? And I heard this when I was super young. There was a million people in this world that have a similar mindset. So if you could find those million people out there, bro, you're straight. Yeah. But now it's just finding them. You feel me? Ah, fuck, I was going to yeah, say Yeah, I think, I, think, I think also too, like, I, I, th- I think even before production, like just like the finding, like like the finding the sense of belonging in a community was always tapped in with me, like at a younger age, especially like when you're going through SoundCloud, because like like you know like when you go to SoundCloud to look through like those like low key EDM bangers, like when you would see all the other people like liking those tracks and commenting, like because it was community as a community based platform, like you know just like just having the sense of like belonging into a community, you didn't think. There was a community because you felt lonely. Okay. I felt like that just kind of. Can I ask you a question? Def- yeah. <laughs> kind of deep, <clears throat> but um. Deep down low. <laughs> right. So. Okay, I know you're able to scale how I put out music, and then how you you put out music. I know you see the differences and shit like that, right? But uh. I've shown you music before that I've never shown anybody before, right? And, like, you don't have to get it. Like, I don't want to... Don't say on the mic what it is or anything like that. Like, I've showed you different types of music I've made that wasn't necessarily EDM and stuff, right? I feel like... And this is just me looking at you. I feel like you found, like you said, how to make your music and mix your emotion in your music. and for you to put it out and I feel like that's why you're marketing your music a certain way is because you really believe in the music you're you're marketing and because like you said it's your feelings and stuff like that right I think 
And I'm, like I said, you've seen the level of mar- marketing I do and stuff like that when it comes to all my releases. Like, okay. you've seen when, you know, when I focus on shit rather when I don't focus on. Sh- I'm pretty sure it's light and day for you at least. I, I mean, I think I can say that for each and every one of us. Like, we have there's certain strengths and certain like. I mean, there's certain, like, maximum efforts and minimum efforts uh, certain weekends and certain days, like... So... Yeah. But I... I, And I think, but... I can personally say it's because I haven't found a way to put all of that together yet. Because you've heard the music, bro. Like I said, you've heard the music that I don't show to people. And that's my venting music, fam. As, like, I have a shitload of that, you know? But the the music I want to promote... It's not that. I, I I I just and I'm slowly finding a way to try to implement both of it. And that's why I don't know if you notice it. My tracks that I've been putting out, vocal heavy, fam. Super mm. vocal heavy with a, a blend of yeah, stuff that, that I true. would make outside of, you know, like mm. I'm experimenting with everything and I feel like once I find that level of here it is. That's when I could get to a level of, I believe in the marketing hundred percent. All of, not that I don't believe in the marketing that I'm doing right now, right. but I'm just putting some cool ideas together, hoping it sticks at this point because I'm just not. Because like I said, I, when when we were here with Craymex, crap, Craymex, Craymex, yeah, Craymex. <laughs> God, hey, dude, um, like, yeah, bro, I tiered you guys higher because I could genuine genuinely see that you guys are and here not even see here that you guys are putting out the music that you guys are expressing like generally you yeah i feel that too i don't feel that too much yet like i know with yourself for myself i know there's some tracks out there that, that are like that no doubt but i just don't i don't have that feeling in me yet and like i know it's just Mm. it'll come bro like but I just haven't found that mix and blend of everything I want to do. And I don't know. And this might click a little more for you now. That's why I love Borgor so much, bro. Mm. Like, you got to understand. I have why a question I to ask love, you after this. You sure. feel me? Like, that's why you got to understand. Like, my influences are my influences because of the shit that I love. Like, you feel me? So it's, it's hard, bro. Like, it's hard. And only you understand what the fuck is going on. You feel me? And so it's like, and how I and th- and I'm gonna ask you a question. And this how you this how I know how you're like very like in tap with Borgor and like your passion for and love for him. Uh, since I've known you, dude, since high school, right? Um, well, talking speaking about music production and like and like artists like making their own music. We all, I mean, it, it, it's, it's fair to say Borwar makes his music, right? Like, you've seen, I mean, you, like, this is one of the reasons why you like Borwar, because he, he he's artistically made his music. And no matter what type of music he wanted to make, he made. You know I mean? Here's my question, bro. Because this has been kind of hot right now. What if he just one day came out and was like, hey, guys, you know what? Like, this whole partying, like, ass and shit, that's all me, but the music ain't, like. I had someone ghost produce that for me. How would you, how would you, bro, I'm really curious. How would you feel, like, if so, you were to know, if you were to find out, and, like, and like, it's just some shit that, it's just true, like, oh, okay, like, fuck, it's true that, it's not true, I'm not saying it's true, but, like, it's a situation where, oh, shit, Borgor is admitting that he uses ghost production, and, like, this, that's what's always connected me to an artist that, like, uh, my, so, my perception that they've always, like, it's their artistic gotcha. creation and their, like, efforts that, you know, that make into the music. So, how, how would you feel about, I like, wouldn't what? feel no type of way because I, like I said, you only know right now why I like Borgor, the, why I like Borgor. Right. But le- I could even relate it to another artist. That's why I like Alice in Wonderland so fucking much, bro. Mm. Like, there's certain artists that I chant, like, I, I, don't, I hope now it's clicking. That I champion because of those reasons. Because they're able to introduce an element of music mm. that producers don't necessarily have. You feel me? Like, right. That, like, like a, that's an aspect, bro. That's one element. But that other aspect is totally fucking right. different, bro. And, like, it, it's... To try to make it come together and still be uniquely you... It's fucking weird, bro. It's 
And that's I get a you. little more. And that's. And you know what? We had psychedelics in here, bro. And I don't know if. I don't know if you noticed. I started like drilling into her about like why she hasn't released music and stuff. So, I don't know if you're able to feel like I was able to connect a different way. But it's because I'm in the same boat she's in, bro. Except I'm able to produce like. Some dubstep and some trap and shit like that. Mm. That's the only difference between, I think, the boat she's in as into why she's not putting out music and, mm. you know, into what I'm, why I'm not putting too much expression or too much promotion into shit I do really because right. it's not there yet. You feel, like it's it's not a hundred percent. Zion Don or whatever the fuck it's gonna be, or or, or maybe like a lot of times it doesn't start off like that, like just finding that sense of like it's gonna take you know, a while, you know like bro. like you know like yeah like that that like uh, off the bat I don't think that started off like right away with me I think it was just me wanting to be like oh let me see if I can just make some cool shit like you said you just started off with Jungle Tear just making some cool shit yeah let me see if I can just make a banger literally that was literally my my trying to make like oh I'm DJing like now let me see if I can make my own tracks and it came to like oh dude I can use this like a way to like you know. Uh, like, really, like, tap in, like, with myself musically rather than, like, what words and, like, actually feeling it. Like, to express yourself in, in, in a music way, I, I think everyone's... No, I think I think like, everyone listening that has not, like, ever, like, spent an hour trying to make music and, like, expressing themselves in that way. Like, even just, like, messing around with a guitar, like, beating on a drum, like, just, like, spending an hour. I just think that's just, like, a... It's, so fucking it's a different, different connection. Yeah, it's a different experience so than... Different. I, 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 every, and I think I, I think that's one of the reasons too, like, I, I, one of the reasons why I produce, because it's just like that, it's a connection you can't really get anywhere else, like, when you're creating, when you're creating. And look, so, like, producing off a laptop, right? You're not really doing much, you're moving your hands and shit like this, right? Maybe head banging at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Now, imagine my hands are making people feel some type of way. Just this, not saying shit, I'm doing this. And people are feeling... I'm doing this. People are feeling some... It's different connections, bro. So, mm-hmm. like... Like, and that, that's, that's what I was getting at, like, when... When I was asking you all those questions at first. People have connections to music differently. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't make their connection to music any less than our connection to I music. I respect that. At all. You yeah, feel me? Yeah, I respect that. Because I feel like some some people, like, think, like... Oh, I know this type of music more than anyone else. Like, my music opinion is, is better than... We're connected to music, fam. What you are connected to is... They, like, I, I'm glad you're connected to what you're connected to. Find that community. But don't shit on anybody else saying, Oh, my music is better. Like, my mu-. You know, like, shit like that. Because that's not, that's not how it fucking works. And... Bro, I, I was kicking it with someone th- this past weekend, bro, and I did not fucking like their attitude of like we were just listening to music, right? Like regular music, and they were just like an EDM head that only listened to, like rhythm or whatever. And bro, like every four minute, like I don't even want to say four minutes, every two minutes, because the same song would still be playing. They'd be like, "Bro, play some rhythm or play." And I'm like, bro, shut the fuck up. Vibe, bro. Like, enjoy the vibe that's here. Like, your vibe doesn't always need to be shown at, at all times. You feel me? Like, mm. and uh, but like, yeah, because I don't know. Why do people think like their music, their connection to music is better than your connection to music or my connection to music or why? Like, there, there there's really no logical reasoning behind it. I want to say it's just more so. Mind. I just think it's just narcissism, like at its finest, when it comes to just like being an elitist and it's, it's again people wanting to shape the realities. Like if a househead like is you know if, trying to find an opportunity to make their whole like space their proximity like all house vibes, they're gonna try to like they'll find a way to do it. Some people are much more like they 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 they, they definitely be pressing people more than others, but you know it's just it's like weird. And then you kill the vibe, and I'm you know like it's. I don't think people are self-aware of what they like isn't what everyone likes and what they like isn't what's supposed to be present at the moment. Mm -hmm. There's a time and place for everything, right? I believe so. Like, there's a time and place for EDM. Can we say that? Yeah. 
Is it EDM all the time, 100%? Is that how life should be? Not life, nah. Right? Like, nothing should be 100%. I don't, I don't listen to EDM 100% of the time. I feel like music should be taken in moderation at the same time. You know how people say everything should be taken in moderation? Mm-hmm. Music should be no different. Hey, but, <laughs> hey, but, hey, but, like, li- but like in life, people be overdosing and shit, you know, on... On the fucking EDM. On the EDM, bro. People overdose on EDM, yeah. <laughs> no, but the thing. Moderation is important. Like, in, in any uh, genre. In everything, Except yeah. Except weed, bro. Smoke as much as you want. <laughs> Snoop Dogg gets through it every day, fam. So. All right. But, uh, but, uh, but okay. But, uh, now let's just go back to the, the first question I asked you about Borgor. So, you be chill, right? You be chill. Like, all right, well. If- I mean, obviously, the vocals. That's him. No doubt about it. But, like, like in terms of, like, the, the, the production side things. Like, so are you asking me if I found out <coughs> today what I know of him today and then tomorrow I found out he has a ghost producer? Yeah. Is that what you're asking me? Or yeah, yeah. are you asking me like what if from the beginning I No, no, him? not from the beginning. Like like all from knowing like like from like from what you've known, like from what you've like always like expressed so like I would your passion say about that Robert. maybe for some genres of music that are coming out today, like when he puts out like techno music or house music, I could believe okay. Maybe he has someone helping him in production. No, no, I'm not. But well, I don't I'm, like and and everything like and, and since the beginning. I've seen videos of him playing the drums. I've seen videos of right. him making synths. I've seen videos of him long format videos of him making music. So I would be like this bullshit if I found out tomorrow. If someone said, "Oh, he has a go," I, I wouldn't believe it. Right. Okay. There would be no like. I've known too much, bro. I I, I obsess. With him from like seventeen <laughs> to like nineteen or some bullshit, bro. Like, I just know too much at this right. point. But like, I, I wouldn't. Well, well, oh, well, but like that was using just Borgor as an example. Yeah. But let's just say like, uh, like let's just say you you knew of an artist, like you were just like under the impression they made their own music. And so why lots What's of. What's a ghost producer to you? Go ahead and I I, I really producer? need a gen genuine like breakdown of what a ghost producer is. Uh, I believe it's someone that work that help that makes your music or help either help, either helps or makes your music in its entirety and stays anonymous. That's that's where the ghost comes in, the anonymous. Um, because it could just be like a a, 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 a another producer or okay, that help so them out. Like, I think the term ghost producer is a bad term. Because okay. what is that producer, bro? Is such a fucking general term. Think right. about it, bro. What does producer mean, bro? It right. doesn't mean you make music. It just means you make shit. Right. So you ghost made shit for someone. All right, we're now, we're, but now we're generalizing. How kind of like how I generalized last week. But but, but we're talking on here. People know we're talking about music producers. Oh, right? but look, but but when ghost production, no, because that's no, that's where EDM gets that shit fucked up, bro. We call it ghost production, but it's not ghost production, bro. Maybe as a ghost writer helping him write. That's not, that's a part of production, but he's not producing. Ghost production means he made the whole track for me. That's what, that's what I think a ghost producer means. He made the track for me, and now I'm saying mm. it's my track. That's ghost producer if you want to put it in EDM terms and you don't right. want to generalize it. Okay. If you want to call someone out for being a ghost producer, that means they wrote it in its entirety. If if you're what you're saying mm. is he wrote a piece of it and saying anonymous, that's a ghost writer. Now they have someone helping them write their music. That doesn't mean they're producing their music for them. That's someone that's helping them give them ideas. I'm not opposed to that, bro. Like that's another right. way of collaboration. But this person, what if that writer, bro, doesn't want the limelight? Doesn't want people knowing he has a good deal, bro. Like, right? What's wrong with that? No, nothing wrong with it. I wouldn't. That doesn't deteriorate what I think of that person. Gotcha. Like, that just, bro. This person didn't want credit of. They didn't want credit, bro. Or else they would have right. made it a collab, bro. If, okay. If that person really wanted credit for something, bro, they would have made credit. They would have made it vocally known that no, this shit is not supposed to come out. <clears throat> I wrote this, or they would. Or that shit wouldn't go out. They wouldn't agree to the terms. Mm. So they agreed to it. So I'm cool, bro. That It's what that ghost writer wanted, bro. Like, at the end of the day, some people don't want what we want. Like, we were going that earlier. Right. Some people just 
want to say I made music and I got paid for it. That's goals for some people. You that's feel a, that's me? rent. That's, that's what I'm head. saying, Everyone. bro. Like that. And if they want to take it to the point where I want this name, they could. They just got to stop doing the deals now, bro. Like that's facts. It. What? Hey, but yeah, that's but that's that's crazy. It's because uh, EDM gets it fucked up, bro. It's EDM that gets that weird ass fucking perception of shit. Like it's EDM, dog. Like straight. Period. Because I'm not mad at people in in other genres having writers, bro. My favorite album of all time, bro, is uh the Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Mm. She has writers, bro. As much as it's her album, bro. Right. She has writers that helped her put a lot of this music together, but it's still my favorite album of all fucking time. Like, right. No matter, you can't say shit, bro. Like it was still her idea. Like she had the totality of. Yeah, I want to go in this direction. Oh, yeah, I like your writing idea. She still has, you feel me? Like, uh-huh. if it wasn't her saying, oh, yeah, I like your writing idea. If it was someone else doing like, you know, that's, that's different. But as mm-hmm. long as it's that person and they have a track record of, of what they put out is obviously them, bro. No matter what goes on, it doesn't take anything away from me at all. Like, even Drake, Drake now, bro, people know he has writers. What does that mean? Mm. At least for me, I mean, at least for me, nothing. I like it. I don't think because at the end of the day, bro, I could give you a sheet of lyrics and then give it to another person, and these sheets of lyrics are gonna sound totally different. I just gave you words on a paper, fam. Your cadence right. is gonna be different from his cadence. The way you choose to break up your lines and lyrics is gonna be different than he breaks up his lines and lyrics. The beat you choose is gonna be different from the beat he chooses. You feel me? Mm. So. At the end of the day, like, yeah, everything played in, but it got the outcome I enjoyed the most. And this was the person that made it happen. So mm. without this person, none of it would have been there. So it doesn't really matter. Mm. Would you let someone ghost produce your stuff? No. No? Why would no. I do it? Oh, I don't know. I could have someone ghost produce my shit right now. There is a buckload of people yeah. on Fiverr, on fucking. They're, they're there. They're fucking there. But that just takes away from who we are, fam. I don't want it to be easy. Like, that's, that's stupid, fam. It's dumb. It doesn't make sense. Nah, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, like, uh, like from the. Like, a lot of, I've had some people ask me, like, have you thought about ghost production? I was like, me making other, like, other people's music? And they're like, no, it's like you, like, having someone else make music for you. And I was like, that takes away from like my fucking. Uh, that's the thing. That's the thing that I, ru- that takes like my yeah. Like it takes away like my rush. My fucking like like one of the biggest reasons why I produce like like I wouldn't feel comfortable like having someone else like trying to like, like from the art artist artist side. Things like yeah, like I it's just hard for me to be in like if I saw it from the business aspect like yeah we could get this person like and we could get this ghost producer that makes this type of shit and then form like a project yeah I could I could go I could go with that but like something that like if, if, like, if this artist, wasn't already my passion if this wasn't my, my producing my passion I could see how that's comparable right, right like, yeah there you go let's comparable. pull all these things together and let's make it profitable there you go but it's my passion so I can't look at it that way yeah there you go there's no way for me to look at it that yeah, way yeah yeah I feel that yeah, and that's why for me it's like, dude, like I don't like, like if someone got this shit goes through, it's like at this point I'm just like, dude, like as, uh, for me, because I see it from a lot of different angles. Like, dude, as long as the end product and the brands like on their shit, like it's it's ma- it's doing some shit to stuff for people. Like, why I gotta ask myself, why is it? If why is it bothering me? Why is it bothering other people? Like, you know, <laughs> like that's why I always like, dude, like if that artist does that for that for those people, like. Uh, you know, like I'm not a big fan of that, but I'm I'm not gonna let that bother me. Like, all right, bro, I'm gonna ask you an infamous question. Uh, but it wasn't that question wasn't in terms of EDM, so I'm just gonna ask this question, but in terms of EDM. <laughs> all right. Joe Budden once asked Little Yachty, "What do you want out of hip hop?" I'm asking you today, "What do you want out of EDM?" And what do you want to do for it? What do I want out of EDM and what do I want to do for it? Or is this just a selfish endeavor for you? There's no wrong answer. What do I want out of EDM? 
It's a deep question, bro. Trust me, it's a deep fucking question. I don't know if you've ever Specific, asked yourself. I mean... I'm trying to... I mean, it's weird because now I'm starting to ask myself, why haven't I asked myself this question? It's a deep fucking question, bro. Like, you really got to think about it. Is it that deep? How do you answer that surface level? I want world peace out of EDM. <laughs> it's not how that shit works. Right, it's not right how that now, shit works. man. Yeah, well, I want to provide electricity for countries that don't have that resource through EDM. I mean, I mean, like, that's I possible. Could say, I could say you kind of answered it earlier. Like, you want a community. Like, like what I want... We'll get to what I want to do for EDM. After I answer what I what what I want out of EDM, um, to always have a place for other dance music people to get together, that's one of them. Two, I hope I know I hope that, and this is the thing that it's just it's now it in this day it's tampering because it's gone mainstream. I've always want. I hope it just keeps on. It, try, it tries to stay like as underground as much as it can. Cause I always feel like EDM has kind of derived from underground roots, and because of how like mainstream it's gone, I just hope that in EDM like it's still it's still like derives from its roots, and I feel like it's still done. It's still been doing a great job at that. Um, see what like, what do I, what do I want I, out of EDM? Can I okay. tell you something? You don't. I don't think you ever ask yourself this question, right? What do you want out of EDM? And what are you doing for EDM? But I think you're... The answer of what you're doing for EDM or or what you're contributing to EDM, whatever it is, you're already doing it. You feel me? Right. Like, you're doing it as a whole. Like, who you are, specifically. Right. You're doing it already. But I don't think you've ever stopped to realize, like, why do why am I doing this for EDM? Because what do I want? I don't think I don't really think I've asked that particularly. Like, what I want out of EDM? Because what do is it safe to say that kind of sounds selfish? What do I want out of EDM? Or like I don't know. Like I just I just never really asked myself that. Like I is there anything that I need to get out of EDM? You know, like, that's just, you know, it's just questions I need to ask. Like, is there something that people should get out of EDM when they come across EDM? If they a sense of community, you know, like, just like a sense of community. Saying. Yeah, like, that's what I said. I think you kind like, of early, just, just, answered like, it like, Yeah, just like a sense of community. And I think that's like, and now I, I, okay, I'm a, bluntly, bro, I haven't asked myself that question just because I feel like I already got that out of EDM, bro. Just a sense of community. I already found, like, at the, so that's that, that reality, yeah, that, that's that said, reality you already is, answered yeah. it, and you're doing what you're that doing. That reality now. kind of is already like, yeah. The, I, I know, you know, yeah. I know, but we've never voted. You've never. I guess, I, I, guess I never. I, I guess I didn't really have to answer that, but because it's just already been said in stone. Like I guess, like I. That that was yeah. That's already that answered. What I wanted out of EDM, that shit got answered like back in 08, 09 since me coming across the dance music record, bro. Like. That mi- that's the minimum, bro. The going to the rave, that was the fucking extra. And then, you know, I just think just the existence, bro. That's it. Like oh, the okay. existence of so, dance me EDM, bro. The existence of EDM, like I don't think because I don't think when, if I was young, even like 18, 17, 18, I don't think I would have gave you a strong answer of what I wanted from this, bro. Listening to dubstep, listening to Borgord, listening to all that shit. I couldn't give you what I wanted out of this. I could have, bro. I, I was shuffling. I was like doing a bunch of shit, bro. Like, it gave me like. I didn't even know there was a community like this, fam. So I couldn't even tell you this is what I wanted. Yeah, yeah, I feel that. I did not know there was a real life, real people community. All I knew is that there was online music like this. That's all I knew. So I, all I wanted from EDM at that point was to listen. All I wanted was right. was the music, and then I realized what I wanted out of EDM was the community that it drew me into because of the music I like. Because I like this music. I like the people I like the community that are around this music and stuff like that. That only came with time passing by with me getting to understand who all these people are. Like what what type yeah. of people are this. I couldn't I could not tell you that in high school. 
Because there was no community, bro. Like, there was only what we heard online. Yeah, it, it it was just a very small like even even when it was EDC like when it was EDC LA like that was like that was to to, to community what it is now like that was that was a really small group of people that went to EDC LA Coliseum like even well, back I wasn't in the even day. a part of that so I couldn't even tell you like uh, no yeah, for I sure found my community there like I because look yeah, bro, like, I could even tell you like I didn't find that sense of community going to all these festivals and stuff like that. It's from being around, like, people like you, like, you know, like, shit is how I found people like this, man, that, that, oh, shit, you're just living every day like me, too, and then we do this shit, and now we're outside, like, I have my everyday job, but at the end of the day, like, we come out here, and we do this, and we're striving for something different, right. you feel me, like, didn't know that was a big community, I thought it was just us, fam, I was like, damn, like, no, until and, and, I got yeah. to know these people. Yeah, dude. I think for me, like, um, what I what I wanted to get out of EDM, I got that early on, dude. When I when I was in middle school, like, starting to shuffle, like, knowing that there is like watching the YouTube like the videos online and seeing that there are dance music records, like, not that many, right? Oh eight, oh nine, but um, like just just seeing that, uh, oh yeah, there is a community out here, like, uh, that already enough. I already that that was that was like already good enough for me to get out of EDM to be like oh dude like there's other shit that people like that I like and it's different it's not really popular and, it's, and like it's that's tight because like it's like it's like kind of like being like the outcast like people don't really it's not really like the norm that people will listen to yeah you got your little you got your better off alone your I'm blue I'm a need and all that shit but this was like underground like electro Dutch I mean whatever it was back in the day. Uh, I feel like I already got everything out of EDM like early on because I was already linking up with people like like Shuffler, like Shuffling. I was already linking up with Shufflers. Like, um, I got that early on. Like, what I wanted to get out of EDM was like a sense of belonging and a, a group of people and access to people that fuck with the same shit I was fucking with at the same, uh, at that same time, like EDM wise. And, uh, I feel like I've, I've, I feel like that was already answered for me. Like even before I like, going into high school, like when I started shuffling in middle school, like linking up at the mall with other people from other middle schools, like they fucked with EDM, they were shuffling. Like all oh, we know about Cloud Nine, Gotham City, like they have a room where like EDM's popping. Uh, like I feel like I feel like that was the starting of like oh yeah, like this this is EDM and I'm liking what I'm getting out of it. Like that's what I like about uh, EDM that there was something like for that, like something to listen to, like somewhere to. Even if it wasn't that big at the time, like just the fact that there was other people that like were fucking with the same shit, um, and again, it's 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 kind of hard to really dissect that year oh eight oh seven oh nine because it wasn't that really popular year for dance music. If we're talking about how it is now, um, but like what I do for EDM. I mean, I don't know. I guess I guess I provide another listening option for dance music fans that want to listen to EDM. You know, they can cop over to my page and listen to a different dance music listening experience and see if they mess with it. They can connect to it. Um. Uh. You know, uh, being able to have the opportunity to like post up at a venue at a location and like, you know, build a place uh, for people to come and like listen to dance music. Um, I think that's been a real cool opportunity. Uh, real cool opportunity to do this platform with you, like getting all these people to come in here. Uh, that are underground, or even some people that are already like self-established in this area. Um, uh, you know, just learning about their endeavors and like, uh, their opinions about this shit. Like, uh, this is what CDM all about. Like, honestly, like I, I'm, whatever it is that's happening. Me, my my association, like all my whole contribution with EDM, like I think if whatever's happening, it, that's all like um like, I don't know specifically. I'm not really looking for anything from EDM, like you know, I'm not asking EDM um to put me on a throne or nothing like that. You know, I never really asked myself this question. I mean, it's just like I don't know. I'm just doing my thing, like uh. It's not what they could do for me. What can I do for you? I have my philosophy. Like, I guess, like, well, 
a lot of times when I've been trying to like tackle this, you know, what can I do for you? Like, I guess, like, I, I, it's hard for me to answer that first question. Like, what, what I want out of EDM, um, and what I do for EDM. I, you well, know, you, I like know. you said, you you had answered that at an early age. Yeah, I just I get I didn't have to like really think about that like this recently. It's just kind of guess. How long have you lived in uh, Myrna Valley? Since I was three, so ninety nine. Yeah. And I feel like you're. There's a lot of people like you, but not a lot of people like you. It's if fine. that makes sense, bro, you gotta live in one area your whole life. For the most part. Okay. You feel me? Like you you had that stability of everything's going on here. We're not moving. Like uh like shit's not falling apart everywhere. Like you know, like you gotcha. gotta consistent every day of what a town, what things are like and stuff like that. You yeah, feel yeah, me? for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like that that's Yeah, if you want to tour mobile, come see me. Uh, for sure. I I think I can show you around. <laughs> And not people, not a lot of people come from, from that, bro. Like, I feel that, yeah. Stable and like, not 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 to dilute anything or, or whatever. Like a, like you had stable household, like yeah, yeah, mom we, and dad yeah, and stuff like that. Like for sure, you feel me? Like, I feel like that puts you in a a unique spot because I look for at sure. I look at a lot of people like artists and they come from fucked up situations and stuff like for that. For sure, for sure. They had, to, they had to figure that shit out, bro. Like. For sure. From a weird ass, like, damn, how'd you do it? I don't know. And, like, you're that. able to look at things from a perspective of, yes, like, this is this is how it should look because, like, like, I don't know, you're able to find that, that community and stay with community and, like, you know, like, mm-hmm. shit like that. And I feel like that's unique, like, right. to a lot of people. Some people don't find this community until, like, they're in like their mid twenties and stuff like that, where they're like, "Oh shit, this has been here my whole life, bro." Like, yeah, where was this at? Where was this open community at when I was, you know, like in this type of situation, or you know, like blah 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 when I was doing this, 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 and this. And I feel that. that. You feel me? So it's like that. That question was answered early for you because you found it early. Some people don't find it early on. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it started shuffling. Yeah, when I started when I started shuffling. I just was able to like. Yeah, see, not everyone shuffles, fam. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I guess I was, was never able to uh, relate to EDM in a in a a dancing aspect, bro, whatsoever. Like that was one of the reasons why I liked going to the mom Fridays when I was in middle school. Cause, I mean, as I'm in mo, for some reason in cities like Marina Valley, at least. Like, on the weekends, if you're, like, a teenager, like, the shit to do was to go to the mall. But I would go to the mall more so just to link up with, um... Dude, I was social as fuck on MySpace as a fucking teenager for some weird reason. Like, middle school. I I was, like, trying to get to know every every other... I was a YouTuber, you know what I'm saying? Like, at the time, like, suck a fish, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I was just trying to get to know people from other middle schools. And I started started figuring out that there was other shufflers from, like... Um, Palm, Landmark, Vista Heights. I'm like, oh, dude, let's link up on Friday at the mall, and and then the people would tell me, oh, like, uh, here's this like song, and I like we would put each other on, and that was my first sense of like experience of and belonging of a, like in person community with other people. Um, shout, dude, big shout out to uh, you know shuffling that got me for sure into dance music, because uh, that was my first way of expressing dance music. Like, that was my, that was one my first form of expressing dance music. And then DJing and then uh, production. No, yeah, it's just interesting to think about. That's all I wanted to ask. It was yeah questions, like I said, I've heard in other interviews in terms of other genres and stuff. So, yeah, just wanted to bring it up real quick. But, yeah, yeah true. What time is it, fam? I, I mean, know. I don't know, bro. Uh, oh, shit. I got to set in a little bit, fam. Two hours, dog. Let's fucking go. What the fuck? Yeah. But uh, yeah, you have any announcements? Anything you want to share? Um, check out my Zion Don socials. Uh, yeah, uh, listen to all my music on streaming platforms. Uh, hey, Nero Bird is out everywhere. Go check that shit out. Uh, one of my favorite tracks I produced this year for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, 
No, that's pretty much it. Dope, dope. And uh, if you guys are looking to do any remixing, I got some stems available for anyone that wants to uh, create an alternate version to my newest single, Never Want to Leave. Uh, a joint mixture of Future Rhythm and German Bass out now on your favorite music app. Once again, it's called Never Want to Leave. Uh, stems are available uh, through the link on my Instagram uh, or on the SoundCloud description of the track. Um, deadline, uh, stems, key information are all going to be uh, through that link, through that uh, folder. So if you guys are interested, uh, I will be choosing some remixes for the official distribution of the Remix EP. Um, looking forward to that. Uh, been doing a lot of Remix EPs this year. It's been pretty cool to see. Uh, different versions of my single. So they didn't want to do it with this one. So if you guys haven't checked the new single, Never Want to Leave, uh, check it out. I uh, really like it. One of my favorite pieces I've done this year. Uh, free download too. Uh, also, Low End. Uh, I'm not sure when this is coming out. But uh, I think it's safe to say. Uh, October 7, uh, we're having Om Nom headline at the concert lounge. <laughs> Um, yeah, this shit fucking was in the works for a minute. Uh, but I'm finally comfortable to say this. Uh, so if you guys are not familiar with Omnom, uh, get familiar. October 7th, some Tech House vibes. Uh, it's released with a bunch of uh, dope uh, record uh, record labels like Dirty Bird. And this, I mean, I, I, I know my cousin sees a lot, like Animal sees a lot more of like the record labels he knows. Um, he knows more about it, but I know like Dirty Bird is like one of like those big labels that a lot of people uh, have gotten to like known Omnom from. At least that's like my understanding when I talk to other people because I guess he's from around here. I see him on lineups too from local, so uh, it was real cool to get him on. He has some pretty cool uh, tracks out there as well. Go check him out. He has a collab uh, with one of the artists we've had too, Techno Tupac. Um, October 7th, uh, say following Low and ENT for the free RSVPs and pre-sales information on that. And besides that, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, any last minute things or? No, we good. All right, cool. Thank you guys for tuning in to Lose the Temple and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.